to rejoice and be glad in it. I said to be glad in it because of what he has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This time, may we congregation please stand as we receive our pastor, Bishop Arthur Embrasure and our choir. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, we are going before the Lord in prayer. We are thanking God for his blessings and for his mercy, for all that he has done for us. We want to pray earnestly for a family who had a loved one accidentally killed uh, today. And we know that God is able to bless that family and help them in this that terrible hour of bereavement. Uh, God is always there. He is never far away. So let us always remember that whenever things go wrong, don't feel like you have been abandoned by God because you have not. Let us pray for that family that God will bless them and strengthen them uh, in this terrible and tragic hour. Let us pray that God will be with us this day. And as you remember your own petitions, let us not forget those who are in hospitals, those who are at home recovering. We know that God is a healer and that God will know, there is no doubt in my mind, will hear our prayers. Now someone here today who needs Christ, not just someone, there are, there, are, there are any number of people here today who we pray that the Holy Spirit would touch their hearts and they will give themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Uh, they have been talking about this and thinking about it for a long time. Today is the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we do thank you and praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, because you have blessed us in such a marvelous way. You have been with us, Lord, in good times and in bad. Father, we can only fully appreciate your presence when we think about your goodness. 
when we think about your mercy. Hear our prayer, O oh Father, and bless those, Lord, who are in hospitals, who are in nursing homes, who are at home recovering from some illness. Stretch forth your hand and heal in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you can heal them right where they are. They don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to send for any blessed handkerchiefs. You don't have to have a point of contact. The point of contact is between them and you. Uh, Father, hear our prayer. Touch them, Lord. Heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe in the healing power of God. Oh, Lord, bless them. Strengthen them and encourage their hearts. We pray, oh, Lord, for those who have lost a loved one. Help them, Lord, in this their hour of bereavement. Give us strength, Lord, to do thy blessed will. And, Father, we ask you to touch some soul here today in this waiting congregation that they may hear your holy word and give themselves to Jesus Christ. We pray for those who are worshiping with us by television. Go into their homes, O oh Lord, and bless them and touch them, we pray. We ask these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all the people said, Amen. Responsive scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the second through the fourth verses, and six and seven. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Medan. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And the people said,
beautiful, beautiful music. Oh, come, let us adore him. Praise the Lord. The memorial services, funeral services, for Ellen Samuels will be Monday tomorrow at 6 p.m. at Kennedy King College. Lamont Holyfield, will you stand? The Board of Trustees, faculty, and graduating class of Roosevelt University announce Lamont Holyfield is a candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. Sunday evening, January 18th. 1998, 745 o'clock at the Auditorium Theater. Yes, we praise the Lord for Mr. Holyfield. I'd like to invite you back today at 4 p.m. to come and worship with us. This afternoon, the Women's Fellowship presents an old-fashioned praise service. The ministry and music will be Sister Leola Stutley and the praise team and the sanctuary choir. Oh, this afternoon promises to be a hallelujah time here at the Apostolic Church of God. So don't miss that. Uh, to our visitors and to all, our, all of our guests, we praise the Lord for your presence. We are very, very, very happy to have you here. We want you to know that you are indeed welcome and that a seat of welcome awaits you here at all times. We just want you to enjoy the Lord with us. But in the audience today is the sister of Elder Nathan Heyman, Miss Maria O'Kyan. She's from St. Louis and she's visiting her family here and the church today. We also have in the audience Joan Collier's daughter, Denise Young. She's here from Cars Carson's, California, and we're pleased to have her too. But we're pleased to have all of our guests. We just want you, as I said before, to enjoy the Lord with us and plan now to be with us again. And please have a happy holiday. Thank you uh, very much, Sister Knuckles, for those announcements. I hope you will keep them in mind. I just want to uh, add just a few. One of the things that I do want to uh, announce is the women's retreat, the women of power, this is our focus program, women of faith, and the women's choir will be holding a praise and worship service uh, Monday, January the 5th uh, at 7 p.m. in the Kenwood Sanctuary. Uh, this is a, a pre-service uh, in preparation for that great weekend on January the 16th and the 17th. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful weekend and uh, I certainly hope that uh, as many of you ladies as possible will become involved in that. Uh, now the last count that I had I think was, uh, was almost 400. Uh, did, I, did, I get, did I get come close? It was almost uh, 470. 700. Praise the Lord. All right. I will probably don't have to announce this then anymore, do I? But at any rate, uh, we're looking forward to a tremendous, if you want to be a part of this, this is the last day in which you can sign up, and that will be in room, two, in room 207. This is a wonderful weekend where women are going to be uh, confronting themselves and the Lord as they grow in grace. Uh, now, this meeting on January the 5th, will be at 7 p.m. in the Kenwood Sanctuary. Uh, the women's choir uh, will be uh, singing and the word of God will be brought forth by Evangelist Ivory Knuckles. So please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, today is the last day for toy drop off So those of you who are bringing toys for, for children, they can be dropped off in the Saving Grace bookstore, but this is the last day for that. Now, I do want to make an announcement for the men. Where are the brothers? I want to announce for the brothers first. Come forward, brothers. Now, we, we, we talked about what was going to happen with the women, and this is taking place in January of 1998. Uh, 1998 is going to be a wonderful, really exciting year for the Apostolic Church of God as we move into our new wing that will be uh, fully equipped and furnished by April of 1998. We'll have a ma magnificent ban banquet hall on the first floor, 14 additional meeting rooms on the second floor to accommodate all the plans and programs that we are moving forward with in the name of the Lord here at the Apostolic Church. 
One of the things that we are doing along with what the women are doing is we are de developing a real discipleship orientation program for men. And the title of this is The Making of the Man of God. The Making of the Man of God. The men of God are not made just because you got baptized. Uh, it takes some time to make a man of God. Uh, these are the men who are standing here who represent all ages of uh, this church, including my age. You brothers, it takes a long time to get where I am. Uh, 76 yes, sir. years. Yes, sir. Brethren, these, these, and these are men, these, these are men who, who love the Lord. And they are standing here because they want you to understand that you don't have to wait until you're 76 years old to get involved with this. Amen. Uh, this is the time to go now, the time to do this is now. The making of the man of God. Uh, and they're, be, they're gonna be holding classes every Thursday from, June to fi from January the 15th to April the 4th. So it's not a long drawn out thing. And I'm asking all the brothers to come out to learn some things about the cost of discipleship. Uh, find out why fiery trials come uh, and why, how we can gain the victory over them. Learn how to apply biblical principles in your everyday life. Find out the difference between being a Christian and a disciple. Learn how to let the fruit of the Spirit flow in your family life. From January 15th to April 4th on Thursday night from 7.30 to 9. Brothers, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of you to get, become involved. And we have some great teachers, wonderful men of God, Minister Milton Smith, Brother Louis Lafayette, Phil France, uh, Minister Byron Brazier, Minister Marvin Maynard, and many others. Uh, I'm, going to be a, I'm going to participate in teaching some of these classes myself and we're just going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. So brothers, we want you to do that. Now remember, seating is limited. We want you to register now. Now where are they going to register? Right out here behind, behind this wall. And if you want to register, go out this door. Now brothers, I think what we ought to do is you ought to have a place to register out here by the, the, the information desk as well. Because a lot, I was out there shaking hands and a lot of brothers, some brothers came out and said, where do I, where do I sign up? Yes, sir. And I had to tell them to go way all the way around, back around there. So have some place to sign up out here as well. Yes, all right? Now, this is of no cost to you, except one. And that is, there's a book on discipleship that will cost $5. So you're, you're purchasing the book. You need the book if you don't even come to the class. Cost of Discipleship. This is a wonderful, wonderful book. And, and it's from this book that these classes are going to be, uh, and these or orientation programs are going to be taken. So keep that in mind, brothers. 1998, we are on a new level with men. Stand up, brothers, all the brothers in the church. Look at the brothers. Look at the brothers. Look at the brothers. Brothers, we are on the march. We are on the move. Set aside some time, and let's get involved, all right? God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Oh, I'm excited about 1998. The Lord is good. And thinking about 1998, I don't, I don't want you to forget, watch night service. Uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, that's New Year's Eve. Now, the world is going to be doing that thing. You know that, don't you? Because some of y'all remember what y'all did before y'all got saved. Didn't you? No, come on, come on, you know I haven't forgot it. I've been saved over 50 years, now I haven't forgot it. I knew, I can remember when, I remember when I got out of the army. I got out of the army, December the 28th, 1945. I, I was discharged. Now you know, I, I was like a, a wild man. <laughs> I've been in the army over three years. And I got out of the army, and I remember with some of my mustering out pay, I bought champagne. It was flowing. <laughs> New Year's Eve, prayer. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad the Lord saved me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I honestly believe in the bottom of my heart. I believe if God hadn't saved me, I believe I'd been dead. 
I really believe I would not have lived. And I'm so thankful to what God has done. And we who are Christians, we are always in church when the old year goes out to thank God for that year. And we are in prayer. When the, when the old year goes out and the new year comes in, we are in prayer before the Lord. I want you to fill this sanctuary, fill the Kimball sanctuary, this whole church. We all ought to be here on December the 31st uh, for that great service. Now there will be no Bible class on that Wednesday, December 31st, because the service will start at 10 p.m. on December 31st. Now for Wednesday, there will be Bible class, Christmas Eve. I'm not canceling Bible class because it's Christmas Eve. Now, I don't want anyone, I don't want anyone to feel guilty if they don't come Christmas Eve. So I'm just saying to you now, if you want to stay home and dress the Christmas tree, finish your Christmas shopping, whatever, wonderful. Not, no, no problem. And I don't want you to feel guilty for doing it. But there's a lot of folks going to come to Bible class. And I'm not going to close Bible class down because of it. So those of you who want to come to Bible class, there's going to be Bible class Wednesday. Of course, if you want to know the truth, you can come to Bible class. I, I, I'm going to tell you what, how to do it, like I used to do. When I used to dress the trees, lay down the tinsel, put on your coat, come to Bible class for one hour, then go back home, pick up the tinsel, and finish the work. Now, I don't know about, now, now, now for, for most of you brothers, see, See, I can't fix anything. I'm not good with my hands. It's hard for me to read uh, uh, directions. So in putting together baby buggies and scooters and all that, I was like three or four o'clock before I got finished with it. Because I would have the baby buggy all fixed, put up, but it wouldn't work. <laughs> because I had left something out. I had to take the whole thing down to put that other piece back in and then start all over again. Now, I'm, when, you got to know that when I found out that I had left that one thing out, you got to know that I was glad that I had the Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> the devil put all kind of words in my head. <laughs> all kind of words came into my head, but I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to say those words. <laughs> I'm just going to take this down and put it back together again. So come on to Bible class, but if you don't, then I'll understand because you are a wonderful and loving congregation. Now we have a young lady here who's been wait, patiently waiting because the, uh, and I believe you represent uh, the, the, the willing workers. God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Will the willing workers please stand? Bishop, on behalf of the willing workers, I am presenting to you and your lovely wife, Sister Brazier, stand up, Sister Brazier. <laughs> we wish you and your family, we wish you and your family a blessed and a Merry Christmas in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to thank, don't sit down, Sister Brazier. Praise the Lord. Will you mind your brother, give Sister Brazier a microphone because she needs to say something to this congregation uh, just before Christmas. Thank you so much for this. You're willing workers, you're wonderful people, and you remember me and my wife all time, at all times, Easter, whatever, and I want to thank you. And all the willing workers, God bless you. Set the bridge. And I thank the Lord for every one of you. And I just have one comment to say. <laughs> no, I won't say that. <laughs> I can't remember Bishop trimming the tree. <laughs>
Come on, up here, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but I got to clean that up. <laughs> I do remember the problems we had putting together the toys. That was a real problem. But usually the children and I did the tree. He might have set the tree on the stand, because we couldn't do that. But usually the kids did the trimming, the kids and I. Make, 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 the best, <laughs> make the best of it. Make the best of it. That goes to the last time you're going to get a microphone. <laughs> so right now, I want to wish every one of you a very Merry Christmas <laughs> and a prosperous New Year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Lord, I miss you. <laughs> now, where was I? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. God bless you. Now the time has come for us to receive our morning offering. <laughs> Let us give God the glory. You know what I can tell you, Sister Bridger? You and I would never exchange anything for this congregation. This is the greatest, most wonderful congregation that any man could ever, or any first lady could ever hope uh, to be a part of. You are the greatest of all people. And I, I just, uh, I'm very moved by the love and affection that this congregation shows to to uh, me and my wife and my family. It's, a, it's a, just a marvelous experience. It's been a wonderful journey, Christian journey, with this congregation. You are really, really a blessed people. Uh, we are just thankful to God that uh, we are able to give the Lord an offering of the tithing. We bring our tithing offering to him uh, who has blessed us in so many ways. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to strengthen all of you in your uh, walk with him. And uh, let us give liberally as God has blessed us. Let us give him of our tithing. And I believe one of our most beautiful singers is going to be with us this today, uh, Sister Elizabeth Norman. Uh, I saw, Sister Norman, why don't you come out? I saw, come right out. I saw the writing, uh, the write up in the uh, uh, Tribune. And uh, they mentioned Sister Norman and said that she should be singing at the lyric because she is, and she is now, uh, singing uh, with uh, the author. You with, which, 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 uh, which uh, uh, orchestra are you singing with now? Many. You're doing with one here in Chicago. The symphony. The Chicago Symphony Orchestra. She's singing with the Chicago. I knew you was going to come here. And her voice is just beautiful. She, she blesses us here on so many occasions. She's going to be singing, doing our offering. And while we are taking the offering, I am going to go into the Kenwood Sanctuary uh, to uh, uh, greet the people in Kenwood Sanctuary. And, uh, and you rest assured, I'm not taking Sister Brazier over there with me. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your blessings, and we thank you for your mercy and your kindness. The time has come now, Lord, for us to receive this morning offering. We ask you to bless it and sanctify it. It will be used for your greater glory. Bless your people, Lord, as they bring that tithing offering to thee. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, would you please come forward? God bless you. Rose 
the king of love and light the
And I think of all you've done And all the victories you've won I lift my hands and praise your name Most Holy One For you are wonderful Marvelous, glorious, mighty Lord I lift my voice and I'll give you The highest praise Hallelujah
give praise to Jehovah the King. I want to thank our choir for those wonderful selections that they have given to us, how they have inspired us and blessed us because we do worship God uh, in music. And very, very often the word of God is brought to us through the marvelous and wonderful music of our choir. And I do want to thank them for their presentations today. And now I want to ask you to open your Bibles with me because I want to rush to my subject matter. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to be preaching uh, for the next six months a lot from this book of Romans. I feel led of the Lord to go in this direction. Uh, this book of Romans is the most powerful, profound letter, I believe, that Paul ever wrote. I'm always worried about making those kind of statements about what's most profound and what's most powerful because all the word is powerful. All the word is profane, pro profound. But it seems to me that the whole gospel is wrapped up in this treatise that Paul wrote to the Romans. Many of us really stop reading Romans a lot when we get to the end of verse 8. Um, excuse me, chapter 8. Where Paul closes out with this tremendous statement that nothing can separate us from the love of God. A lot of Christians pass over Romans 9, 10, and 11 because it has to do with God's promise to the Jews. It's powerful three chapters, you really ought to read them. And then we go to those last three, those last chapters, beginning with chapter 12, where then Paul talks about everyday living of a Christian. So this book is tremendous in its meaning to the Christian family. And so for the next six months, I'm not going to say I'm going to be preaching every Sunday out of the book of Romans, but I'm going to be preaching quite a bit out of this book uh, over the next six months. I'm going to read to you the first nine verses of chapter five. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, peradventure, for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And all the people said amen. amen. 
I have read the, all of these verses so that the three main verses will stand out in a more clearer way. Those three main verses I don't think would have been fully understood. We would have really captured their meaning without keeping them within the context. Verses six, seven, and eight. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want to concentrate first on this word commend. Because it can be a little confusing to the casual reader. Because the modern definition does not clearly give the meaning that the apostle intended here. Most of us understand the word commend to mean to deliver to or to trust something to the care of another. We find that uh, in St. Luke where Jesus said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But the word in the original language means more than that. It really means to represent something that is worthy of confidence. Consequently, there is a translation that says in regard to this verse that God proved his love for us. And another translation says that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners and that is God's own proof of his love toward us. You know, I preached on God's love this morning in the first service. I'm back on that subject again, but not in the same way. I read these previous seven chapters before, uh, these previous seven verses before verse eight, because I think that it is important to make a connection between what Paul has said in the main text to the three verses that I'm preaching from this morning. If you notice, Verse six begins with the word for. It, it attaches what Paul is getting ready to say to what he has already written. For when we were yet without strength. This clearly indi indicates that the writer is continuing on to what has been previously stated. Paul is really making sure that the saints have a very clear understanding of what salvation is based upon. It is God's love for us. And this love is not based upon anything that we have done. Because God loved us not only before we were born, but he loved us before time began. Paul said in his letter, to the Ephesian church in that first chapter, verses four and five, he says, according as he hath chosen us in him 
before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children through Jesus Christ. Now, you know that there are, there are people, many of them, and maybe there may be some among you here today who cannot really comprehend the love of God. In fact, there are some preachers who, who don't really like to talk too much about God's love. You know, there are ministers and God bless them because we need all kinds of ministers. There are some ministers who don't care too much about talking about the love of God because it thinks that, they think that if you talk too much about the love of God, people will live sinful lives. So they play down the love of God and they highlight the wrath of God. Have you ever noticed that? A lot of you, you, you they, they talk about going to hell. Hell has enlarged itself, they say. All liars and all adulterers are going to have their part in the lake. Well, that's true. I'm not going to argue against that. It's true. But that's where their emphasis is. And may God bless them as they, God uses them in that area. God has used me in another way. My ministry is different. That's why God has so many different ministries in the church to help everybody. There are some people who, whose view of God is an angry deity, an angry God who wants to punish us for our misdeeds. And we are only saved because Jesus is interceding for us with pleas to spare us based upon what he did at Calvary. How true that is. No question about that. It is a truth. But in relationship to God, it doesn't go far enough. Because what people forget is that it was the Father who sent the Son to do what the Son did. Don't ever forget it. It is not an angry God wanting to punish us and wanting to send us to hell. No, the Bible says God so loved the world. Not just that God loved it, but God so loved the world. And he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Some of you here today who have not yet received Christ, I want you, when I'm through with this sermon, you need to get up out of your seat. And you ought to not just walk down the aisles, you ought to be running down the aisles. Oh, Father, I thank you. When I read these sacred scriptures, they are words of life that just almost leap from these pages and stir up the heart and burn us with fire as we really look and see God. Sometimes we think we are saved because we did God a favor. You are not doing God a favor. You are not doing God a favor when you get saved. God has done you a favor for letting you live. Look what verse eight says. But God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet, the word yet, while we were still sinners. Remember the word prove. God proved his love for us that while we 
were still sinners. Christ died for us. If you look at verse 6, it talked about the ungodly. Did you notice that word due time? Yes. In due time? You know what it says? It says that this was always in the plan of God. From the foundation of the world, this was in the plan of God. And so when the time came, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Sinners, ungodly. These words represent people who are in the wrong. People who have transgressed God's law. People who are in one way or another in opposition to God's will. Profane people. And being in such a state, there was nothing in us that could induce God to love us. When you go to a bank to borrow money, you have to have something to induce the bank. You gotta have a job, a good credit rating. Money in the bank, that induces the bank to make you a loan. The bank sees something in you and says you are a good risk. You induce the insurance company. You got to go have an examination and having an examination, the company is induced to give you a $100,000 policy. They're gonna take a risk. They're gonna take a chance that you'll live a long time. They don't know, but you have induced them to your good health. But that was nothing in us. No good, no nothing. Well, your heart, the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Where can you find a love like God's? I read a lot of stories. I read about man's love for man. Prince Andrew and Natasha in the epic novel, War and Peace. Paris and Helen in the, in the Iliad. Don Quixote and Dulcinea, Othello and Desdemona. Anthony and Cleopatra, love. But where? Can you find a love? Whether that sermon is in the first service, look, behold, what foreign kind of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the children of God. And God chose us not because of the fair face, not because of an even temperament, not because we were kind and warm. No, God chose the unworthy, the unlovely, the ungodly, the irreverent, the profane. He chose sinners. And as some folk even today can't believe it. And God does not love us because we gave him some kindly sign that we wanted to do better. Because the Bible says that when we were without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. And let's take a look. Let's take another look. What does he say in verse 7? For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet for a good man, some would even dare to die. Now, what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying here that, it, that it's hard to find someone who would die for a righteous man. 
But for a good man, you might find somebody who might, who just might do it. But what's the difference between a, a righteous man and a good man? A good man is, is, a, is a man of virtue, a philanthropist, if you please, a person who does much good in society. A righteous man may be a man who is stern, keeping the law, a man governed by legalism, not by love. A man who gets a lot of respect, but not much affection. Said, for a righteous man, it's hard to find somebody to die for him. See, for a good man, maybe you might. But God died for not a good man, not even a righteous one. You wasn't, you wouldn't either. And if history has recorded a righteous man, according to man's standards, it was Saul the Pharisee, who after, after his conversion became Paul the Apostle. As far as human righteousness is concerned, no one could pass Saul of Tarsus. His ancestral line descended from Abraham. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. And in regard to the Mosaic law, he said he was blameless and his zeal for Judaism led him to be the most vicious persecutor of the Christian church that the world has ever seen. He wrote to the Galatian church and explained to them how he tried to destroy the church of God. But then he said, but, but God called me. By his grace. He said, when it pleased God, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Oh, Lord. A vicious persecutor. It's hard for us to understand why, why would God call this man? There's a lot of other good men out there. A lot of men who wasn't doing, wasn't killing the saints and persecuting the saints, but God got a persecutor. A man most vicious in his hatred for Jesus Christ. Somebody's always looking, looking around for proof about Jesus' resurrection from the dead. One of the greatest living proofs of Jesus' resurrection is Saul of Tarsus who a man in one moment was on the dusty road breathing out threatenings and slaughter and the next moment he's groveling in the dust saying Lord what will you have me to do no one had been fully able no atheist no agnostic no doubter no skeptic has been able to fully deal with the conversion of Saul of Tarsus Oh, he was an epileptic. Oh, he was a man who was changing slowly. He's, he was heartbroken about the death of Stephen. But that's not what the Bible says. Not only did he hold the coats of those who stoned Stephen, but he went to the high priest to get letters of authority to bind everyone he found calling on the name of Jesus. That don't sound like a broken-hearted, repentant man to me. The Bible says he was breathing out. He was inundated, swallowed up with threats of slaughter. You know what slaughter means? Mass killing. But when God touched him, he said, now I count all things but loss. I count them but dumb, garbage, refuse. I might win Christ and be found in him. Not found in some other religion. Not found in Judaism. Not found in Catholicism. Not found in Protestantism. Not found in any other ism. 
but that I might be found in Christ. Not found in Pentecostalism, but found in Christ. What a blessing. Significant. Now there are many things that Paul could have boasted about in his life. His lineage, his education, his, his rapid rise in Judaism. But he was not a boastful man. And in fact, he, he made every effort in his writings to avoid it. His only interest was to show how and what happened at Calvary and the significance of it. And ladies and gentlemen, just a cursory reading of the New Testament will reveal that at the very heart and center of the gospel message stands the cross of Christ. That cross is the main event. That Christ died there for you and for me. Yes. And if you can remember the book of Isaiah, talking about the Lord, he said he was wounded for our transgressions. We can travel back to Exodus when Israel was enslaved and about uh, to be freed by the Almighty God and how, the, how our lamb was slain and the blood put on the doorposts. He said, every one of you get into a house and strike the blood on the doorposts. And God was not concerned about who was in the house. He wasn't concerned about the kind of life that they live in the house. There was some folks in the house that was mean. Some folks in the house was low down. Some folk in the house was family troublemakers. There was all kinds of focus, people in the house. We're talking about a nation. You know everybody in that nation was not holy. You know they all wasn't sanctified. You know they all wasn't doing well. But God said to you who I have chosen, get in the house. Because the death angel is going to come across the land. And I'm not so concerned about who I see in the house. But when I see the blood, there's all kind of folk in the church. Some real good, some not so good. Some who ought to live much better lives than they do. And I'm not talking about the church building, I'm talking about in the body of Christ. There are some folks who want you to believe that everybody in the body of Christ is 100% perfect. But I've been around for a long time. And I know that a whole lot of ministers who saying that, they themselves are not perfect. But the Lord said, but if you're under the blood, that means if you have been born again, if you have been baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, he said, when I see the blood, then I will pass over you. So I want you to know that it is not your goodness. It is only God's goodness. It's God's goodness that covered Adam and Eve. It was God's goodness that closed the door of the ark and shut Noah and his family in. It was God who delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt. It was God who kept clothes on their back. It was God who kept shoes on their feet. It was God who led them by a pillar of a fire by night and a cloud by day. And it was God who saw you while you was out there in the world. It was God who saw you doing your dirty work. It was God who saw you living the way you were living. But it was in God who planned to deliver you. That's why we're here today. Because of who God is. And I do thank him for it. And I do believe that when you get a hold of what God has done, your life will be better. When you really forget about who you are and begin to think about who God is, you will live a higher life. Some of you are living on a lower plane because you're trying to live for God by your strength. But when you forget about who you are and think about who God is, then your life will be a better life. I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt 
that those who know Jesus Christ and put their trust in him live better Christian lives than those who are trying to keep some law. We've just forgotten about who God is. You're trying to keep all kind of laws and trying to keep all kind of taboos. We have put more taboos on the people of God than you can shake a stick at. You can't go here, you can't do this, you can't wear this, you can't wear this. Don't, 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 don't go here, don't go there. Can't, can't, can't. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when you get under that kind of, of a strain, you have dismissed one law and put on another law. But by here, the word of God says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Let's get off the way from the yoke of self-righteousness because your righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes into your life, a change is made. A change is made. There's a change there. And I hear the writer say one thing I do. I press. I press toward the mark for the pride of the high calling of God. I press. So it means that living a Christian life is not an easy life. I have to press. Somebody said a long time ago, it's a pressing way. Somebody wrote a song and said, I'm pressing on the upward way. Not the downward way, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where sin abounds. My brothers and sisters and fears dismay. Let me tell you something. When you receive Christ, things change. Receiving Christ is not like joining a church. It's not like changing religion. The Christ of God comes into your heart and turns you around. He gets into your mind and the thing that you thought you couldn't get do without, you find you can do without. The life that you thought you couldn't live, you find that you can do it. Oh, it's a pressing way. There's no doubt about that. And sometimes, forgive me, sometimes you'll stumble. Sometimes you'll fall. Sometimes it looks like you're climbing a, a gravel road. You, you, you climb up five feet and slide back four. I remember when I was in the army, I was in a trucking company, I was climbing the Himalayas on the Burma Road, on the, on the Lido Road. And I was climbing those high mountains in this truck loaded with 500 pound bombs, demolition bombs. And the, the road was heavy and the road was gravel. And I had the car, I had the, the, the truck in, in first gear. And I saw a turn in the road on this high mountain road. And in the turn, there was nothing but gravel. I said, can I make it? And just as I got to that place, I double clutched and dropped it down to what we call low, low. And that GMC truck climbed that mountain. Sometimes, brothers, you got to put it in low, low. There was two other gears. There was two other gears there. And it wouldn't make it in, we put it in front wheel drive. That was when front wheel drive wasn't on automobiles, it was only on trucks. You slammed it in front wheel drive so all the wheels were pulling. And sometimes that wouldn't make it. There was another gear called low range. Sometimes you gotta put it in low range. 
But I can tell you now that you'll keep on moving. You'll keep on moving. That GMC truck never failed us. Let me tell you something, the Holy Ghost has never failed us yet. I'm through preaching. I'm through preaching. I want to open the doors of the church. The Lord is saying to me now, you said enough. You preached enough. If anybody now want the Lord in their life, they ought to get up and come now. If you're here today and you want to be saved, I'm going to tell you now, the Lord loves you. And I want you to get up out of your seat right now. Wherever you are, whoever you are, get up now. And come down these aisles. The Lord. God bless you there, young lady. Get up now. There's another person, there's another brother right there. There's a brother coming from the balcony. There's another sister coming down that aisle. There's another brother coming from the balcony up there. The Lord loves you. He died for you. He died for the ungodly. He died for sinners. Will you come? Come on, brother and sister. Come on down. There's some family coming down. Two men, two brothers coming from the balcony. What love, what love, what love the Father has bestowed upon us. Come on, come on. We're waiting on you. You know the Lord's touched you. You know the Lord wants you. You know that. Don't put it off any longer.
May God bless you all. We're going before the Lord in prayer. And we're going to ask Brother Hunt to come and lead us to the throne of grace. And I do want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. May God bless you and your family. And don't forget my announcement that we will be, ha we will be having Bible class on Wednesday. May God continue to strengthen you and encourage your hearts. Minister Hunt. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, we thank you for another occasion that we might come to lift up your voice and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for your hand which has been in our lives navigating us to this point. Lord, you have brought us full circle and we thank you and praise you and give you the honor and the glory. Lord, everything has not been as we has wanted it to be all the way, oh God, but we thank you for the things that you have done in our lives how you've moved and kept us, oh God, when we couldn't keep ourselves, watched us when we couldn't watch ourselves, oh God, saved us when we couldn't save ourselves, and we just appreciate you this morning. We give you the due glory and the honor and the praise. We worship you, we extol you, we lift you up high above the earth, above the moon, above the stars, above all Jupiter. Lord, we just thank you for the word that have come forth this morning. We ask that you let it sink in our hearts, that we might not let these things slip, oh God, but that we'll use them and apply them each and every day. Lord, we thank you for the souls that have come before you. We ask that you fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, that their lives will never be the same. Change them from this day forth, oh God. Set them on a new path. Set them in a new dimension, oh God. Give them on another level, oh God, that they might serve you in the beauty of holiness. We thank you for our pastor and his wife and we ask you to continue to watch over them and shield them and protect them knowing that they are the kingpin and the devil would love to move them out of the way but oh God your watchful eye your angel protection is always around and we thank and praise you oh God for the shepherd and oh God as we as a congregation help us to be in one accord with one mind one heart one intent with no isms and schisms among us oh God but being sound and rooted in the word of God and we'll continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The pastor has left the, the pulpit so that he might have an opportunity to greet each and every one of you and to wish you a Merry Christmas. And he is out in the lobby. Um, so, but, so those who are in folding chairs, uh, you can consider yourself dismissed, but please, as you leave, please leave quietly. Shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, we come to thee, always forever giving thanks for the souls that have come as a confession of faith. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will fill them with the Holy Ghost as you have promised. These and all the blessings we ask in your precious name. Amen. I baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved sister, 
We now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We who are alive, we're going to meet the Lord in the sky. I'll show you, I'll show you. My dearly beloved brother, we now baptize we you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. beloved brother we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost
my dearly beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My dearly beloved brother, we now baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. souls that have come to be baptized. Right before we do dismiss, if, if uh, Sister Vita Vickers is in the, still in the audience, if you please call home right away. It is urgent. Shall we stand? Please don't forget the services this afternoon put on by the women. They're going to have a glorious time in the Lord, as well as Wednesday night Bible class. At this time, I'm going to ask our elder Felton Bailey to come and dismiss us. Let us receive the benediction. Now may the grace of God, abundant with goodness, mercy, and truth, abound toward you and George Richley, and bring you back to this anointed place at its appointed time. Thank God and amen. <laughs>